The families first that the current premier has touted since day one has not applied to our families. And there are deputy ministers and other bureaucrats who demand that we work within their checklists and how to raise our children and get our children back. And as recent as Friday last week, there was a meeting that many attended and one of the um, staff people of the deputy minister basically threatened that if, if you're doing this or you're doing that, then we're not going to pay for your travel and we're not going to pay for this and that. And so those heavy-handed approaches to how we come together to discuss our children and families is inappropriate and not appreciated and not tolerated. And I will bring this up with Doug Hughes when he's here tomorrow on behalf of the Ministry of Children and Families. The other is um, around the women's initiatives, uh, the Aboriginal women, and I know there's been a lot of, uh, I guess, attention brought to the murdered and missing women, but also just women in general, because the first place that suffers budget cuts are women's programs, initiatives, and I understand uh, through this, this booklet that we've got from the union that MAR had established a minister's advisory council on Aboriginal women, which was absolute news to me. The first time I've heard about it was when I read this. And as a, a member, an interim member of the BCAFN Women's Council, I think we would, should be a little more informed about the women's initiatives that are going on about Aboriginal women. And I will raise this as well tomorrow with uh, the chairperson uh, when they give their report. But there's the Native Women's Association of Canada and a number of others that I think provincially it would assist, if, if we could get assistance to coordinate these efforts, it would feed nicely into the, the national agenda uh, for women 